Did creatine damage my kidneys? Hey, my name's Dr. Mike, and recently I got a blood test at my GP, and I got a phone call from him a couple of days later saying, Mike, your creatinine levels are really high. What's going on? So a creatinine level is used to check your kidney function. And when doctors get the blood test back, they think that your kidneys aren't working as well because they're supposed to filter out this waste product. Now, obviously, I was a bit shocked because I keep really well. I go to the gym, I try and eat healthy. So I stopped the creatine for two weeks and did the test again. Guess what? Levels back to normal. So does that mean that creatine causes kidney damage? Absolutely not. But it can make it look like that on a blood test. Because when creatine is metabolized, it turns into creatinine, which is that waste product that builds up in your system. And that's what will make doctors worried when they look at your blood tests. But I've made no secret that I absolutely love creatine. And I noticed a difference when I came off of it from a repeat blood test. I've been using it most mostly for going to the gym and for helping improve my strength. But there are so many new studies coming out now that it might be useful as a nootropic. And what does that mean? Well, a nootropic is something that affects your concentration, your cognition, and potentially your memory, which we'll talk about later. So in today's video, we're gonna debunk the myths about creatine and we're gonna look into where its benefits might come from. So whether you use creatine as part of your gym routine or you want to use it to improve your concentration and performance, I'm gonna cover it all in this video. So what is creatine? Creatine is a natural supplement that's made in your body, primarily by the liver and the kidneys. And it's also found in foods like red meat and fish. And about 95% of your body's creatine is stored in muscles, mainly as a compound called phosphocreatine. But that other 5%, which is what we're gonna talk about later on, is found in the brain. Phosphocreatine is an important compound. It's like the backup generator for cells. And why does it actually help? Well, you've probably heard of the compound ATP, which is the energy currency in the body. And when you supplement, you boost your levels of creatine phosphate, which helps your body produce more of that ATP. And simply, it's like keeping more in the fuel tank for when you need those bursts of energy. So most people know creatine from going to the gym because it's been used for a very long time and it's well studied. And creatine helps muscles contract harder and it helps them recover faster because it generates more ATP by regenerating ATP during high intensity exercise. And studies consistently show that it increases strength, muscle mass, and short burst performance. And it's really popular in those sports where you need a short, sharp burst of energy, like bodybuilding, like football, like sprinting. But creatine isn't just for the gym. Remember earlier we spoke about 5% of your creatine stores being in the brain. We're now getting more and more evidence about creatine's effects on the brain, and this is really fascinating stuff. So we're looking at it as more of a nootropic, which is a brain booster, if you like. And scientists are really excited about its effects on memory and mental clarity. And it looks like creatine plays a similar role in the brain to what it does in the muscles. So think about when your brain might need a burst of energy like a marathon study session or when you're stressed. That store of phosphocreatine replenishes ATP and gives you that extra burst without needing oxygen. So what do the studies show? Well, clinical studies are showing that creatine supplements improves memory, concentration, and processing speed, almost kind of like an upgrade on your computer. For example, this meta-analysis showed clear benefits on memory, attention, and information processing. And this one found that in vegetarians that were given five grams of creatine per day for six weeks showed small but significant boosts of cognitive function. And this was looking at the five gram dose so it will be really interesting in the future as they increase the dose to see whether that comes with any other added improvements. And there's been some real research in older adults as well, which suggests that creatine can improve short-term memory and reasoning. And it's especially promising for those that don't eat that much red meat in their diet or who are under a lot of stress, like those that might be sleep deprived. So that is really promising. So now that we've spoken a little bit about creatine, let's talk about how it works exactly. What is the biology? So creatine enters your cells and picks up a phosphate to become creatine phosphate. 
Clever, I know. So this compound acts like a charged battery. And when your cell needs energy, which is the ATP that we were talking about earlier, the phosphocreatine ditches the phosphate and becomes creatine again. And that's used to boost the ATP production. Makes sense so far? So this is really important in tissues that have high energy demands, like muscles when you're sprinting intensely or your brain during intense thinking and concentration. And the most important thing about this, this energy can be released without using oxygen. So it happens very, very quickly, which is why it's really important in those sports where you need a short, sharp burst of energy. Now, the more recent studies are really quite exciting. A recent systematic review in 2024 again showed benefits on memory and attention in adults. And another larger trial in 2023 showed similar results, again with that five gram dose. And one of the things that I find really fascinating is that in some of the studies, it showed that even one dose when you're sleep deprived helped people maintain their mental sharpness the following day, which I could be doing with. And that makes us think, does the brain absorb more creatine when it's under pressure? And that really is a fascinating way to think about how creatine might be improving brain function. Now let's talk about my kidney scare. So yes, if I saw my blood test with no background and no context, then I would be worried as a doctor because a high creatinine level on a blood test can be an early sign of kidney disease. But if you're taking creatine, then this doesn't mean that your kidneys are failing. It's just that you've got more creatinine in your system because of the breakdown of creatine. Got it? So what do you do? Well, if you're going for a blood test with your doctor, you should first of all tell them that you're taking creatine or secondly, stop the creatine supplements a couple of weeks before you get your blood test. And as a third alternative, you can do a blood test called a cystatin C which is another way of measuring kidney function that doesn't involve creatinine. So those are your three options. I should have done number two before I went for my blood results, but I completely forgot because I've been taking creatine for so long, I completely forgot that I was taking it. It's part of my routine. I don't even think about it anymore. And so it's probably my bad. So my blood test went completely back to normal once I stopped taking the creatine. But what do the studies say about creatine in kidneys? Is there a link and could there be a problem? So there have been extensive studies on creatine and kidneys and the high quality evidence doesn't show any link between creatine and kidney issues. In fact, creatine is one of the most studied supplements there is and probably one of the most safest. Would I take it if my kidneys weren't functioning normally? Now that's a different story because we don't have the data to say that it's safe for people who have existing kidney problems. So always speak to your doctor, especially if you do have a chronic kidney issue. Okay, so what's the key points from going to see your doctor for a blood test and being on creatine? First of all, tell them you're on it. Secondly, just because your creatinine is high doesn't mean you have kidney failure. It's just a breakdown product because of taking creatine. And and using me as an example, after I stopped creatine for two weeks, my blood tests and my kidney function or my perceived kidney function went back to normal. So what doses of creatine should you be using? So there are two main schools of thinking and this has always been the way in gyms. You might find somebody who talks about a loading dose which is up to 20 grams a day for the first week and that's supposed to get your muscles saturated with creatine. The only downside to this that I've seen in my personal practice is high doses of creatine can lead to diarrhea and quite severe diarrhea. So if you can tolerate it, fine. You might start up on those higher doses and then once you've done that for a week, you would go back to the five grams that's recommended and do that every single day. And then the second group of people don't do that loading dose. They just do between three and five grams per day ongoing and it might take a little bit longer for the muscles to be saturated with creatine but then you're not going to run into any potential side effects. So two options, load with 20 grams per day for seven days, divide it into four doses or go between three and five grams per day ongoing. Whatever works for you but always listen to your body and always make sure that you're mixing creatine with enough water and you are drinking enough throughout the day. Now vegetarians might have to take an increased dose because remember, most of our creatine in our diet comes from red meat, but actually vegetarians that take creatine might actually see a lot of benefits. 
So you either load it and you take 20 grams per day, divide it into about four doses for the first week, and then you go down to five grams every single day ongoing, or you're in the second category where you do between three and five grams and you just do that every single day. You don't need to cycle off and on of creatine, you can keep taking it every single day. So let's talk about the most common questions that I would get about creatine on my social media. Number one, do I need to worry about cramps or dehydration? So this has been looked into by the science and the overwhelming evidence says that you don't really need to drink more than what your normal is when you're on creatine. It's not gonna dehydrate you and it's not gonna give you horrible cramps. Some people say, will it make me bloated? Well, this one is partially true because part of the way that creatine works is it draws water into your muscles. So yes, initially when you start taking creatine, you might feel a bit bloated, but that's because of water retention, not fat. And the effects are very temporary. Should you take creatine if you're pregnant or breastfeeding? Absolutely not. There is no evidence to say that taking creatine when you're pregnant or breastfeeding is safe and I would absolutely avoid. What about if you've got kidney or liver issues? Again, there's no long-term data to say what it does if you've got a chronic kidney or chronic liver disease. So my advice would be no, but if you really want to ask, you can ask your doctor who knows your own situation or you can ask your gastroenterologist. Does creatine make you go bald? years that people were saying that creatine can increase your risk of getting male pattern baldness. And that was because it was thought that creatine might increase a hormone called DHT, which acts on the hair follicles and can potentially make you go bald. But the science says no, there's no risk. Don't worry about that. You'll keep your hair. So who will gain the most from going on to creatine supplements? So we've already spoken about athletes, people who go to the gym and lift weights, Vegetarians, because we know vegetarians in general will have a lower natural creatine levels because we get the majority of our creatine from red meat. And now into that list, we can add older adults because we know that there is a nootropic effect which will enhance cognition and potentially short-term memory. And again, because of recent research, we can say people who are going through times of real stress, we know that by having extra creatine to use as fuel in the brain may help you get through it. So remember, creatine isn't a stimulant or a hormone. It's basically a supplement that helps you recycle ATP, which is the cell's energy source, a bit more efficiently. So here's the bottom line, and here's what you need to know from today's video. Creatine is one of the most studied supplements there is out there on the market. It has the science behind it, it has been thoroughly researched, and it is very safe. When you use it properly, it can make you push harder at the gym, but it might also help you through times of stress and improve your memory and cognition. But if you're going to get a blood test and you're taking creatine supplements, you need to tell your doctor. Learn from my mistakes, I didn't, and I got a worried phone call from my doctor saying, Mike, your creatinine levels are really high, what's going on? Because they might think that your kidneys are failing. So the easiest thing to do is tell your doctor. The other thing you can do if you like is stop taking the creatine supplements about two weeks before you go for your blood test and everything will have gone back to normal. Remember, the creatine isn't affecting your kidneys. There might be a problem with your kidneys because you're not filtering out creatinine, which is a byproduct of creatine breakdown, if you see what I mean. So if you enjoyed that and you like learning about science and the human body and relating it to what you see in social media, then hit subscribe and I'll guide you through what things you should be doing for your health, what supplements you should be taking, what supplements you shouldn't be taking and everything in between. But until next time, stay healthy.